Hello and welcome to Jeff Live. I'm Melinda Wood, Communications Officer for the World Bank. I'm here today with Kevin Rabinovich. Kevin is the Vice President of Sustainability for the Mars Incorporated. Uh, now I'd like to start by asking Kevin about the work that you're doing for Mars on sustainability. I understand you lead that work and you're also working on renewable energy projects for Mars. Could you tell us a little bit more about what that work entails? Yeah, absolutely. So I lead what we call the Healthy Planet Team at Mars. So under our sustainability program, which is called the Sustainable in a Generation Plan, we have healthy planet, thriving people, and nourishing well-being. Um, so people, planet, and nutrition. Mm -hmm. So I, I lead the, uh, the, sorry, planet, people, nutrition. I lead the, the planet work. And um, within that team, what we as, as Mars, so we're a very large privately owned food company, uh, world's largest chocolate company, world's largest pet food company, chewing gum. Um, so we have supply chains all over the world from a raw material sourcing point of view. We have factories all over the world and of course we sell to consumers all over the world. So uh, our sustainability program looks at the environmental and social impacts across that entire value chain. Um, and within the Healthy Planet team we're particularly focused on three areas which is greenhouse gases, so the carbon footprint of, of our business, our water use, and the land use in our supply chain. And for all of those areas, the most important in terms of driving impact is our raw materials, which would be true for any food business. So we spend a lot of time working on issues in raw materials, things like deforestation, water use in, in scarce areas, um, productivity. And then in our factories, we work on things like zero waste to landfill, and as you mentioned, renewable energy, uh, which is all part of our, our targets to, to deliver science-based targets for all three of those areas, carbon, water, and land across our entire value chain. That's great. That sounds like a really ambitious uh, program that you're running there. Um, I'm interested to know, um, what is Mars feeling optimistic about coming out of you know the, the COP meeting we've just had and going into 2020, which has been dubbed the uh, super year for biodiversity and nature? Yeah. Um, what, what are you looking forward to? So I think uh, at a high level, I'm, I'm optimistic about a couple things. So I think one is, I think there's a continued trend in the, in the private sector towards setting targets based on impacts. Mm -hmm. So not activity, not how much money did you spend or how many projects did you do, but what difference did it make on the ground? Mm -hmm. and, and increasingly there's a focus on having those targets be based on the science of what's necessary. So not just measuring that things are better, but measuring that they're getting closer to, to what science tells us is right. Um, so in the climate space, this would be discussions around two degrees and one and a half degrees and, and things like that. So I'm, I'm optimistic that we're moving towards more of an impact focused discussion. The other thing I'm optimistic about is I think there's an increasing narrative in the private sector about um, this isn't really a company by company discussion. Um, you know, because as I mentioned in, in the food business, most of our impacts come in, in agriculture and raw materials. And the reality is, is that we and all of our peers and all of our competitors source the same raw materials from the same farms all over the world. So we share the base of those supply chains. So solving for that collectively is a more effective strategy than everyone doing their, their own individual thing. And I think that's something that's really taken hold within the private sector. So you're seeing an increasing number of um, collaborations which aren't just about everyone showing up and saying this is what I'm doing this is what I'm doing but coming together and saying how do we all do the same thing to drive an actual transformation in the system not just marginally improve it piece by piece right so it's about coming together and partnerships with other actors in the climate space um, on that note you're here obviously for the the Jeff Council meetings um, what does Mars hope to get out of these meetings so I, I think in the same way that the, uh, there's this increasing trend within the private sector of, of working together um, and really working together as in we are all going to do the same things in the same way, um, you know, I think that same logic needs to expand beyond the private sector. And you know, so the private sector shouldn't be going this direction if the public sector is going that direction. Right. Um, and, and so I think driving the alignment uh, as broadly as possible so that we're all not just working on the same problem, but measuring success in the same way and pushing for the same strategies in a way that's reinforcing uh, is, is incredibly powerful. And, you know, the, the private sector is, 
is is large and and has many um, many levers we can pull in terms of influence. But but ultimately, there are things that really only the public sector can do, and that that are, that is the proper role of governments. Um, and and I think getting very clear on what contributions the private sector can make, what contributions the public sector needs to make, and and the interplay between those, and how do we act in a mutually reinforcing way uh, is, is really critical. And, that, and that's my interest in, in being involved with, with the Jeff is, is it's one channel into that sort of public sector thinking. Right. Yeah, it sounds like there's a, a lot of work ahead, but it's great to see that so many actors are coming together and having these conversations about the way forward. Um, I'd like you to maybe address our online audience. Uh, we have a large uh, young audience who yep. are watching, um, and it would be great to hear from you what the kind of key takeaway, the key message that you have for those people watching. Yeah, absolutely. I think for, for, anyone, uh, for anyone watching online, um, you know, the, the reality is, is that uh, knowing what is right and what's the right thing to do in, in, in the sustainability space in general is, um, unfortunately, still quite a complicated question, uh, and and you know it's it's not always simple to know what's right. So so I would encourage people to um, to get informed, to to really understand what what matters. And so when uh, when you're when you're presented with a piece of information, dig in and, and really try and understand. The other thing I'll say is that as the as the private sector, um, you know there is this increasing awareness about the broader role of of the private sector in society, but. You know the roots and the origins of the private sector more broadly are are about business, um, and and the things that will get the attention of business are are what products people or services people are buying from them and, and paying for, uh, and what companies people are wanting to work for, um, and and I think by sending those signals both as a consumer and as, a, as an employee or a future employee of a business, um, those will be the things that, that get the attention of business and will help drive change. So there really is a role for a youth to be involved and to be really kind of uh, acting as levers of change on Absolutely. this issue. Well, thank you so much, uh, Kevin, for joining us today. I really do encourage everybody online to get involved and join the conversation. Um, you can engage with uh, at Mars Global. Um, you can also engage with us on Twitter at GEF Live um, and also on the Facebook page for Connect for Climate. Please do share your comments, uh, share the video, let us know what you think. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in um, here from GIF Live. Thank you very much.